three or even four doses of a messenger antibodies protecting us from disease. We had already manufactured to sending in the instructions for one. Yes, so I was a professor for 23 mm -hmm. years prior mm -hmm. to joining Moderna, and I ran a very large research laboratory. I was a investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Mm -hmm. um, and the, my research lab focused on trying to understand the fundamental mechanisms by which uh, messenger RNAs are made in, the, in mammalian cells, and then how are they translated into proteins. Um, I, I was very happy doing that, and I would, never would have left, and I became increasingly interested in therapeutic applications for RNA. When I was a postdoc in the late 1990s, mid-1990s, mid I would never have imagined that mRNA could be a medicine. It was just, we couldn't make enough of it. It was just too fragile. Um, you know, it was beyond comprehension. But then in 2013, I heard about this company, Moderna, that was, had some data showing that they could inject messenger RNA into mice and get proteins mm -hmm. expressed. And I um, reached out to them to say, you know, I know a thing or two about mRNA. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can be of help. Um, and so I started consulting for them and I later became on the scientific advisory board. Okay. And uh, I had, uh, as part of that, I was learning more and more about uh, what they were able to do and um, the possibilities. And so I had seen inside, it was really exciting. And I, and I became in so much more excited about the, 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 the application that we could do. Uh, and I found myself thinking more and more about that uh, than about my research previously. And so when the opportunity came to become the chief scientific officer, um, I, you know, decided to join the company. And I have no regrets. It was an amazing uh, opportunity. Yeah, it was one of these once in a lifetime opportunities yeah. Yeah. to create a medicine out of, out of a, a molecule that I've been working on my entire career. Um, and I knew if I, you know, was 80 and looking back on my life, if I chose not to do it, I would regret it. So um, uh, that's what, what made me. Uh... What was your main focus? <laughs> you kind of already did it. So the main focus when I joined in 2016 was we could get, um, there, were, there were really two things. We could get proteins made from our mRNAs, mm -hmm. but we weren't getting enough protein. Mm -hmm. And so we worked very hard on learning how to make messenger RNAs, uh, therapeutic messenger RNAs, that made lots of protein. Mm -hmm. And we were able to increase the amount of protein uh, made per mRNA molecule from 2015 to 2019 by a thousand fold. Mm -hmm. So we had huge improvements there, and that then has enabled us to uh, be able to make um, therapeutics as well as vaccines. Um, the, another thing that we worked on was the mRNA was very unstable once we got mm -hmm. it in the vial. And uh, we figured out, and, and the, a lot of the people, a lot of the researchers in the company were working on this problem of how to, what, what was causing it to be unstable once we had created a lipid nanoparticle and put it in the vial. Um, and we solved that problem. In fact, we published that recently in um, in Nature. Yes. So, so I think I mean this is something that what has been noted, obviously, in the press, and many people were mm -hmm. afraid because they were made so quickly that we mm -hmm. didn't yeah. do you know weren't careful mm -hmm. and that they were so fast. Mm -hmm. But think about an Olympic athlete, mm -hmm. and when an Olympic athlete, let's say a sprinter, is in the starting mm -hmm. blocks. And we marvel at how quickly they can run mm. that race, right? We inherently know that they took years and years and mm. years, sometimes decades, mm. of training to get to those starting blocks. Mm. So what people saw was us running the race 
and how quickly we could do it. But what they didn't see is all of the the years of preparation that put us in those starting blocks. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that we were had everything in place when COVID arrived. Mm -hmm. If COVID had arrived a year earlier, mm -hmm. we would not have been ready mm -hmm. for the variants that are coming, but also our initial work, which has continued, to uh, try to be ahead of the virus. Mm -hmm. So could we predict what might be um, Come, you know, variants that would get worse based on the previous data. And so we are working on these um, artificial intelligence uh, algorithms to try to predict where the virus will go next. Um, we're not really ready to talk about that in detail yet, but I can tell you it's something that, that we are very, uh, you know, working on very hard because if we could uh, predict and have something ready in advance, that would be the best. Right? Uh, but it's not easy because the virus is always trying to, is, you know, out trying to outwit us. Uh, uh, well, I think that what we learned is that mRNA vaccines are particularly effective for the elderly population, more so than than other vaccines. And so that's very heartening, right? Because um, particularly respiratory viruses cause significant uh, morbidity and mortality in uh, the elderly population. And our hope is that we can develop a combined COVID, flu, respiratory mm -hmm. syncytial virus, so RSV vaccine, so a, a combined uh, b annual booster for all three of those significant uh, respiratory vaccine. We've been doing um, modeling, so computational modeling based on the real world data that we got from the adult population and then going to the teenagers mm -hmm. and then going to younger and younger mm -hmm. populations and we could predict what dose would be the, the best to use in the youngest populations based on our modeling. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that that prediction was exactly right. Mm -hmm. Future. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we've already demonstrated clearly mm -hmm. that mRNA vaccines are um, are here to stay, mm -hmm. and they are uh, highly um, efficacious. I always use that word very, very carefully because efficacy is a clinical oh, yeah. word, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we have the data now, and um, they are can be rapidly produced and. Um, can be distributed, you know, we're now building out um, manufacturing facilities all over the world so that uh, if, a, if a viral strain, say, comes up in one part of the world and it's not another part of the world, then you can easily make that vaccine there. I think regenerative medicine. So one of the things that's very exciting about mRNA is it's transient. And so it can provide a transient set of instructions to um, to, to make new tissues or grow new things. Uh, something that we've been working with AstraZeneca on for a very long time is uh, using um, an mRNA encoding VEGF. VEGF is a signal to grow new blood vessels. And so our initial uh, application of that was to inject it directly into the heart muscle of patients who are, are undergoing open heart surgery for blocked arteries uh, when they're getting an engraftment procedure mm -hmm. to help them grow new blood vessels to get around the blockage, mm -hmm. right? Um, now that, but imagine all the different things you could do with VEGF. Um, AstraZeneca had some data showing that um, VEGF could help with uh, diabetic ulcers and wound healing and mm -hmm. things. And so when you start thinking about um, all of the different, just regenerative medicine and in regenerative medicine you want something that is impermanent you want a signal that is there for a short time and then goes away that's mm -hmm. mRNA. There's a solution to that. Sure mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's a fair criticism I mean mm -hmm. with any new technology mm -hmm. when you're yeah. first starting yes. out yes. it costs more yeah. and it you're you know you, you're it's not going to be as good and then over mm -hmm. time 
the cost comes down and the uh, technology gets perfected. Mm -hmm. And so certainly um, m making the vaccines more stable so that they, I mean, our, our, our goal would be to have uh, a vaccine that would have, be stable at room temperature for a year. I mean, that would be terrific, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We are working very hard mm -hmm. to um, increase the um, shelf life of our vaccines at higher temperatures. We mm -hmm. see that as a uh, absolute something that needs, that would be then enabling for the vaccines to get to um, other populations. Um, so it is something that we're working on. But that said, another way around the problem is to make manufacturing uh, sites in around the world so that they can be easily distributed to those populations very quickly, right? And so we're setting up a manufacturing facility in Kenya mm -hmm. for the African uh, mm -hmm. nations. And mm -hmm. with regard to the price, I mean, I just take the example of automobiles. In the very beginning of automobiles, way back in the day of Henry Ford, they were very expensive and mm -hmm. only the very <laughs> rich could afford them, right? And over time, they have gotten less and less expensive uh, because of technological innovation and um, you know, uh, the more and more manufacturing, the 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 parts get cheaper, the everything gets cheaper, and so mm -hmm. I think that will happen with mm -hmm. with mRNAs. It's yes. just a matter of time. Yes. I just don't want that prediction to come back. <laughs> and on. I have we have our hopes and our dreams, and we're working very hard toward those, mm -hmm. uh, and to make uh, just as many medicines as we possibly can to meet. Um, critical unmet needs, and there are many, many critical unmet needs where there are just innumerable diseases where we simply are managing symptoms um, and we're not treating the cause of the disease. Uh, and so if we can do something about those diseases, and the, and the ones that I, you know, particularly touch on are autoimmune diseases where things like lupus, multiple sclerosis, uh, where the immune system's attacking the body. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a critical on that need. We just don't have medicines now that that are aimed at the cause of the disease as opposed to treating the symptoms of the, or managing the disease. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously metabolic disorders where patients are missing some enzyme or missing some protein, if we can give them back that protein, that is gonna be Huge. And, and so it's actually easier to run really fast to catch to try to catch up to the front runners. Mm -hmm. But now we're the clear front yeah, runner. Yeah. Everybody's trying to catch up to <laughs> us. So it's hard to, to stay in that position. And we are um, constantly pushing ourselves to just how much can we do, mm -hmm. right? And we uh, have there's in we're always talking about 10x. How can we do 10 times more? And, and how can we be, become more efficient at, at making our medicines, at the regulatory process, at just everything. Mm -hmm. So um, Moderna's here to stay. I think that um, Moderna is going to be a major player in mm -hmm. making biological medicines in the future.